and you will command, you will command, you will order. Untranslatable word, but tells me it's a direct object. Sons of, in parentheses, you could say, Israel. And they shall take to you oil, olive, pure or refined, crushed two or four illumination or lighting to go up lamp always. Welcome to Tanakh Talk. I am your host, William Hall, broadcasting live out of Kingsland, Texas, USA, with another episode of Learn Hebrew Using the Weekly Torah Parcher. We are currently on week number 20. This is not our 20th episode. This is 20th week in the calendar year. Uh, Parshat Tetzave. I forgot to switch my camera. There we go. Uh, Gabriel, my friend, welcome back, brother. It's always a pleasure, and I know that you were, uh, you've been working hard on getting these out because we kind of like had a little bit of a lag behind, and now we're like doing double time, and you're fixing to have to try to pack after we're done. <laughs> Bless your heart, man. Thank you. You're a trooper. I really appreciate your time. It beats the alternative of having nothing to do. So, very um, good. <laughs> and if you guys it. need, if you guys need a full introduction, if this is your first time watching, um, you're going to want to look for week number 18, Parsha Mishpat team. It was actually video number 1741. That's week 18, but it was our very first episode. So you can go back there, and we have a full blown introduction to tell you exactly what all these this class is all about. Okay, very good. So let's uh, let's get to it. So uh, the text is on the screen, and as you said, this is Parshat. Tetzave. This is actually the second word in here. By the way, the, the name of each parsha is taken from uh, uh, some word, usually within the within the first sentence of the parsha. There are some rare exceptions, but uh, this is where, in this case, we're taking here Tetzave. Okay. So you are our designated uh, driver. Uh, I mean, designated reader, uh, William. So <laughs> driver. <word. laughs> so you can you can drive us through this. Uh, you got this it. First verse. All right, so just for clarification, I've got the white cursor, and he's got the black one. I will follow along with where I'm reading, and then I'm going to kind of try to keep my cursor off the screen so nobody gets too confused. Ve'ata tetzave et bene Yisrael, vayichu elecha shemen zayit zach, katit lemaor laha alot na Tamod, tamid. Uh, excuse me, tamid. Tamid. Okay, do the word. Do the word before tamid. Oh, oh! I said na. I said, this should be nair, right? That's right. Yeah, Beautiful. I said. I think okay. I said nar or something like that. Yeah, nair, right? Uh, yeah, you just yeah, you just gnarly. I see. Uh, <laughs> now I'm looking. You did a really great job. You. If I were giving you, if I were giving you a grade on your reading, you got a ninety-five for sure. On Sweet. That. So that's cool. very well done. Thank you. Okay. So again, let's read it once more time just to hear it as you're following along. And, and I'll put my cursor over the top of the words here. Ve'ata tetzave et b'nei Yisrael v'yikhu elecha shemen zait zach katit lamaor, katit lamaor, la'alot ner tamid. Okay, so let's pick this apart. Okay, so we've read through the first verse. Ata ve'ata and you. Tetzave will command, order, or this particular translation put uh, instruct. Uh, I'm not sure where they get the word further in here, but I think that's like one of those cases where people sort of um, like their own. add a little interpretive uh, interpretive uh, right. element to it. Okay, and also you'll notice is vata, and it doesn't. There's no and here either. Okay, hmm, interesting. Um, now th there is a connection between this and the, what was said previously, and I guess I should say, by the way, just that. Up to this point, we've dealt with the various implements in the tent, the tabernacle of meeting, okay, the tent in the wilderness, and we're dealing with a little bit more here, the menorah, the light, the light in this case, the oil, and then we're going to get into the priestly garments. That's what's coming up right next. Cool. So this idea of tetzave. Now this is a verb. It happens to be in the future. The root of it is tzari, vav, hey. The word mitzvah comes from this, the noun mitzvah or mitzvot. So that's, I guess that's why and I was thinking sav might have something to do with that word. You know? Explain. 
Oh, well, because mitzvot, you said it kind of comes from that word, so I figured a two-letter root word could be tzav as as opposed to tzave or tzava. Uh, I'm just going to show this briefly, okay? just so people can know. If you take this root, tzadi, vav, hey, and you come over here to pealim.com, and you throw it into, there is a virtual keyboard. I already put those in there, and it brought up this. Uh, and so that in the, what's called the two form to do something, it's called let's have vote. Say why? Well, let's, we'll get into that later. But just so people can know, I want to come down here and I want to see the whole time frame of this particular verb. So here we have present and past and future. And here we have metzave. Looks like mitzvah, doesn't it? It does. Met, met, metzave, metzava, metzavim, metzavot. In the past here we have tziviti, tzivita, Okay. Um, et cetera, et cetera. You can see them all here. You also have them transliterated. Um, and then when what we're dealing with right now, this is future. So it says it right here, tetzave. This this taf here actually comes from the word ata. So you could really say, instead of ve ata tetzave, as we saw in the text, you could just say tetzave. Hmm. But it's it's there. And it's not redundant necessarily. But here you can see then how the future breaks down. Here's I. Atzave. And by the way, in this particular category, like uh, will the word medaber speak, mesaper, tell, it's the same cat. It's the same. Let's call it music. Every verb has a musical pattern to it. And if you learn one of those patterns, you've really learned all of that particular pattern. Um, so it's it makes it much, much easier as you master Hebrew to then infer you learn a word in a particular mm -hmm. form and go oh this is this pattern and you can then in your mind extrapolate all the other different forms whether it's present or past or future or command so, okay, so uh, that will come with time so on atzave that so basically it's like a knee tzave, but it's like yes. a, that drops the nun and puts it together let me make this a little bit bigger, and you can see here. So, okay. so atzave, right? That, that, and this okay. over here, okay. Nitzave from Anachnu. That's making right? tetzave more, make more sense to me now because the tav, if it was at the end, it would it would it would be a u also, um, and a ni or yeah. Okay, it's starting to click a little bit better for me now. Okay, and by the way, notice here that in the past and in the future, you have four different forms of u. You have u masculine and feminine singular and you have you masculine and singular masculine and feminine plural the same is true in the future that's why you have four forms of you here that can drive people a little bit crazy so here you see tetzave they're all you will command notice the translation mm -hmm. they're all the same right same translation so tetzave tetzavi tetzavu and there's a rare form here that shows up in biblical hebrew uh which which is tetzavena okay but it's uh, not, not, it's, it's, it's rare. You don't mm, see it very right, often. Okay. Mostly it's it's a vote. Okay. All right, let's get back to the text because that was that was more than a, a, a... So you are going... So Hashem says to Moshe Rabbeinu, you command, you order, ve'atat tetzave et b'nei Yisrael. So the word et is untranslatable. It's simply a marker. It says there's it's a direct object coming. What's that? A direct object is a word after a verb, you know, like the dog bit the man. And so you say, well, you said the... Where's the here? Well, we're here we're dealing with where it says B'nai Yisrael. This is a contracted form. And what that means is this is Ha Banim Shel Yisrael. So Ha, the Banim, sons or children, Shel of Yisrael contracts down to B'nai Yisrael. And we'll get later on, we'll learn more about why they, we said last week, it's, we mentioned it briefly, why the Mem from Banim disappears because this is noun plus noun this is a masculine plural and that's why it disappears okay but let's say so et b'nei israel so what is most moshe rabbeinu supposed to command them and what else happens and and take all of you take all of you they shall take basically so that's uh, all that, of, that's kak or lakak or kak would be yes this this is from lakak and the lamed went to lunch so the vav is and the yud is he or the yud you? is, is the yud is, is yeah well notice it's the yud and the vav here okay this yud and this vav represents well let me go back over here for a second because I'll, I'll show you because it shows up here this is good I like this it's like here you see a yud, yud and a vav. okay and a vav they okay. so this is they they will okay so again the, again the verse is selling is they will okay and, and they shall take and it's it's not translated the same way. It's it's interesting how it's interpreted because here he says the Israelites to bring you, but that's they. 
the Yikhud, the, so the Yikhud, they're talking about Bnei Yisrael, we're talking about the sons of Israel, they will take, or they will bring, Elecha to you, so this word El, this is, there's the word for, for the, that is the, the, the divine name that means it, but this here it's to, okay. and this is Elecha to you, and by the way, these prep, these are called prepositions, and prepositions, there's many, many, many of them, to, for, with, uh, within, uh, about, uh, on, off, and, there's, uh, and they, they, nearly all of them have some kind of a identifier of who we're talking about. So this is to you. So the yud, what is the the yud chaf is combined as the suffix or just the chaf? Um, well, I don't want to get into the technicality of it. But just just know that Alecha means to okay, you. Like fair, we said, fair enough. That's by the good. way, you all you all know Shalom Alechem. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. Now if I wanted to read that's plural, Alechem. Right. If I just wanted to say it personally, right, straight to, to uh William, I, I could say, nobody says it though, I could say Shalom Alecha. Right. But that would right. be, by the way, with an ayan. Gotcha. So, okay. Alechem upon you. But but to say it sounds very similar to okay. you. Uh sh now here are the things that they're supposed to produce. Shemen, that's oil. Zeit, that's olive oil. Zach, that's pure or refined. Ktit, crushed. Okay, so this is a, giving us very specific instructions of the kind of oil. It's not just any shemen zeit, not just any shemen, not just any oil, not just not just any shemen zeit. It has to be pure, refined, and it has to be crushed. So it's the early, the early, the first, basically the first fruits of the olives, you could say. Uh, and what what is the purpose that they're going to serve? Lama or now this you see this word right here. Mm -hmm. What do we see in the first verse of Genesis? Yeah, by he or yeah. So maor. There's actually a, a Jewish outreach organization named Maor on college campuses. It means illumination. Um, and down here it talks about for lighting. So lama or. And then it gives us some more specificity, not just general illumination, but lehaalot. Now, this is an interesting use of a word, because here they've translated it kindling. And there's actually a parsha that's based on this particular word called behalotcha. Or oh, balotcha, some nice. It comes from the same place. Hmm. And it's very, now it's translated to kindle the lights, but it comes, what's the root? The root of it is, and you wouldn't see it if you don't know it already. Allah. It's ayan, lamed, hey. Allah, right. Okay, so uh, so we, we said ba'alot cha, it means in your going up, but really it means in your lighting. So leha'alot, ner, tamid, means it, it's translated to light a, now ner is often like a candle, but in this case it's a, it's a lamp. So a ner could be a candle or a lamp in this case, in biblical Hebrew. And tamid is the word for always. So it sounds a little awkward if you literally translate mm. this to be uh, to go up lamp always. That's kind of how it sounds. But if you interpret it, it means kindling. But it's a there's a I, I don't want to get to. I'm going to save that for the end. <laughs> well, here you <laughs> just you just came on to something, though, that I, that I think is important. Um, in fact, now that you just did that, I'm going to ask you to without explaining anything literally translate every word in verse 24 me real fast whether it makes sense or not just just translate it like start first like via right the way you see it you yep translate exactly you, like you see it one word at a time you want to give a 10 count no no this is this this is all part of it okay rock very and good. roll um, okay, so, all right, go to commercial, live TV. <laughs> <laughs> I remember those days. Okay, so let's, let's literally go for it. So, so, and you will order a command, untranslatable word marker for a direct object. Now, don't translate it with the future word in mind. Translate it, of course, you kind of have to because it's all about context, but, but don't try to make it make sense so much as... We're treating it like each individual word just by itself, like it's one little lesson. Yeah, I know, I know, what you, I know what you want. Okay, so, cool. So, so again, going back, and you will command. You will command. You will order. Untranslatable word, but tells me it's a direct object. Sons of, in parentheses, you could say Israel, and they shall take to you oil. Olive, pure or refined, crushed, two or four illumination or lighting, 
to go up lamp always beautiful 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 please do me a favor and do that since that was really fast do that on every verse like forever because to me that is like so so incredibly helpful it really is I'm glad it was helpful to you. <laughs> I hope everybody else feels the same. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can you can look down here and see sort of yeah, a, yeah. A, you know tra a trans translation that makes sense. All right, and there are many others. Okay, so let's go into verse two. Okay, and it's a little bit longer. So okay, take your time. Yeah. Okay, Baohel Moed, Mihutz. That's a weird word. La far uh, La Paroquet. Oh, I'm supposed to be following. Okay, so I'm going to start with La Parroquette here. Uh, share. Say that word again. Oh, uh, La Parroquette. Oh, Chet. Good. Very Sorry. Good. Thank you for catching that. Uh, share Al Haedut Yaarok Oto Aharon Uva Uva. I'm looking for that extended uh, vowel now. There. Okay, get it. Uvanav. Me Erev Ad Boker Lifne Hashem Chokat Olam Ledorotam Me Eit Bene Yisrael. Wonderful. Excellent. Very well done. So uh, let me read it through one more time at okay. a little faster speed. Okay. And then let's go back and do what we just did and, get, and render a literal translation of it word by word. All right? Perfect. Okay. Beohel Moed, Mehotz Le Parochet, Asher Al Haidut, Yarochoto, Aron Uvanav, Meirev Ad Boker, Lifne Hashem, Hukat Olam, Le Torotam, Meet Bene Yisrael. So, in tent, now if it were in the tent, it would be Ba as opposed to B. But what makes it specific is this word moed. So I know it's the tent here. So I guess it says down here. So be'ohel moed. Moed has to do with like meeting. It also has to do with um, time. There's a whole seder uh, order of the Mishnah, the six tractates of the Mishnah uh, called moed, which has to do with all the different holidays. So a moed, so moedim, basically. Uh, yeah, moedim, right? Moedim right. l'simcha. That's okay. that's one of the things that we say on a holiday, different types of holidays like uh, like Shavuot and and others, Sukkot, etc. So here in Israel, we say they they um, the Ashkenazim from Yiddish say a good moed, mm -hmm. and we say moedim l'simcha. So ba'ohel moed, this is this meeting place, michutz from outside literally means chutz is outside. Michutz from outside, la parochet, la parochet is the curtain basically, the separating curtain. By the way, I just need to say very quickly, many many Hebrew words that that are, there are many Hebrew words that have pe reish, and they if you look at them, most of the time they have something to do with some kind of separation. Uh, it's it's like uh, uh, like pa oh, parasha, or mm, parsha. Nice. That, that's one, mm -hmm. because these are separated into sections, right? The river Euphrates separated between sections. And there are many, many others. Uh, a piece of bread. It's a slice. A slice of bread is cut, is a section, right? So this word parochet creates a, creates a division. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a share which al upon ha edut. Now this word edut uh, has different translations to it. Here it's specifically speaking of the Ark, where the Ark, the Ark of the Covenant. Okay. Okay. So Asher Al Haedut. So it's the and Yaaroch. This means to arrange. This is right here. This is future. So we and this is future singular masculine. That's what the Yud is here for. This is the uh, root. Oto it or him. There is no it in Hebrew, so you have to infer it. Aaron of Vanav. Now, what's interesting here is the subject of the sentence, uh, as is Aaron and his sons, is put way over here. So, if we read it again, we go, "In tent meeting outside curtain, which on uh, basically ark here, arrange it." Aaron and his sons. 
And it says, Me'eriv Ad Boker. So this is from evening, Me'eriv Ad Boker. And that, by the way, is the cycle of a Hebrew day. You know, I'm already in the dark time here in Jerusalem okay. at the time that we're making this recording. This is Eriv, evening. It says in Genesis, it was evening, it was morning, day, whatever. So Me'eriv Ad Boker, from, morning to, to, from, night, from evening to morning. Lifne before Hashem. Chukat. Now, the actual word is chuka, but because it's noun plus noun, it's chukat olam. This is like for an eternal uh, or an, a never-ending decree, if you will. A chuka can be a decree. It means other things also. Okay. Ledorotam, two or four generations, theirs, their generations. Me'et from or by b'nei Yisrael. So we have b'nei Yisrael showing up um, a few times in, in these in the verses that we read so far. Um, and that's that's what that one particularly means. Nice. Uh, it's <clears> interesting <throat> translation. It shall be a do. That's a very interesting translation. I don't like it. Okay. <laughs> All right. You're up again. Yep. Let's do it. Okay. Mouse is here. The Ata Hakarev. No, excuse me. Hakarev. Say it again. Ha. I want to say, oh, Hakarev. Oh, Hakarev. Say it again. Say it again. Hakarev? No, Hakarev. What's, the, the, what's the second letter? It's a it's a kuf. Yes. Hach, then it make a like a Q sound, Q, uh, like a K Q. Uh huh. So, Hakarev. Just say the first syllable. Ha. No, close the syllable with the consonant. Say it's, it's a closed syllable. Notice the notice the spa here. Oh, so okay, it's, it's, that's what. So, Hakarev. Mm-hmm. You, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull it out of you. You say it. You say it. Let me hear because I don't want to take too much time. Hakrev. Hakrev. So it's k, not k. Okay. Ka. There again. Keep ha- going. Hakrev. Okay. Okay. Elecha et aharon achika vaet banav ito mitok bene Israel. Again. Again. Did I miss that one? Which one? Me. Oh, me. Me toke. That's how it's. You better not be token. You better not be token. <laughs> it's 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 a vav cholim, so be be toke. <laughs> me me not be. I'm sorry. Me. Did I say be? No. Nope. Okay. So I see it as me toke. How how is it supposed to be said? Said me toke. Oh, Zach- oh, okay, Chav Sofi. Never mind. It's not a, not a. That's God. right. It's a Chav Sofi. That's God. right. Beautiful. Thank you. You know that thing has caught me for so long, and you finally caught me on it. Good. Bnei Yisrael, lechahan, les lecha. Now things got me all confused. Lechahano li, Aharon, nad uh, nadav, vaabihu, Elazar, vaitamar. B'nai Aharon. Beautiful. Well done. Thank you. Now, let me suggest a little trick for everybody. Okay. I certainly used it when I would run into a word that I was having trouble with going forward. And it was suggested to me, and I'll take this word over here, and we'll do it the way it was. This, there's a concept in linguistics or language teaching called backward buildup. You start with the last syllable, what's known as the ultima, and you go then to the you know, uh, antepenult and the penult, the, the, that, that kind of thing. The penult, the ultimate, the penult, the antepenult, uh, or whichever. I, it's been so long. Oh, anyway, last syllable, next to the last syllable, and then syllable before that, if there is. So here we okay. have the case of no. Okay. Ha no. Oh, I see what you're doing. Yeah. Ha, okay. Yep. Ha ha no. Le ha ha no. Got it. That's okay. easier. Yeah. So, that's so that's one way to tackle a word if you're not really sure another is to if you'd have to go back to the beginning of the uh section the the the, the she or the lesson we did before this one where i showed you on archive.net how to actually hear a well-pronounced israeli uh, version of all of the text of the chumash of the pentateuch and you would hear very clearly how he pronounces that uh, rabbi uh, dan Be'eri. Okay, so let's go through this one more time. Ve'ata ha'krev elecha et aharon achicha ve'et banav ito mitoch b'nei Yisrael l'chahano li 
אהרון נדב ואביהו אלעזר ואיתמר בני אהרון. אוקיי. אז ליטרלי, מה זה אומר? And you, Hakrev, here's the root right here, Kuf Reish, draw near, bring close. And you draw close, bring close to you. But wouldn't, wouldn't, it, wouldn't it, to me, I would say the literal would be the close, like ha. No. No. Explain that for me, Rupa. Th- you would think that. Okay. Uh, but it's, uh, it, the, the verb here, the command form of this verb is Hakrev. So okay. here's, here's where we run into a little bit of trouble. Oh, because it's a verb, not a noun. We're, That's why the how won't work there. Ah, okay. okay. And see, that it's, helps. It, it, might, it might be a music form of a verb or a construction that someone might not be familiar with. So what will they do? We will do what, what we all do. We will regularize based on what we are, have learned up to this point. And it may be incorrect. For example, someone learns, oh, Mem attached to the front of a word means from yeah from right, right? however that is correct unless it's, it's a verb one of several verb forms that are in the present in what are called I call them categories three four five six and seven okay and that's they all begin in the present they all begin with mem and it doesn't mean from It's the first letter, and it's a marker, and it tells me I'm talking about the present. Like, for example, medaber, okay? Mesaper, metalfen, like I'm telephoning. Ani metalfen alecha. I'm calling you, I'm phoning you. Um, so that's, once you know that, then you go, oh, there's another piece of the puzzle that locks into place, and you're, uh, if I'm going to mix the metaphor now, your schematic of how Hebrew fits together gets enlarged. And that's why we're stopped on this, and I'm glad you did that. Okay. So you, sh- you showed regularization of a concept that a, a hey on the front of a word must mean the, not always. Got it. <laughs> okay. Right? And that's the case here. So, Hakarev, Dronia, to you, et aharon, achicha. So, and then again, we have this marker that tells me this is the direct object, not the subject. It's the object of the sentence. So, Aaron Achicha. So the word Ach means brother. Achicha, which is a little hard. The actual technical way to say this, Achicha. You might slight difference in that. Hmm. Achicha. I said it's less scraping when I when I said the Chet. Right? Okay. Yep. Uh, it took me it took me a long long time, by the way, to get the Chet down. So the the Yud Chaf yeah. is the Your. This is the Your. Yeah. Okay. Achicha. Which basically is, if we, if we inflate it, it's ha-ach-shel-cha, the brother of you. Uh-uh. But Hebrew likes to reduce things. That's cool. Okay. Because, you know, pap- papyrus was expensive, right? Uh, so, achicha, your brother, is the reduced form of ha-ach-shel-cha. Okay, nice. Ve'et, banav, and his sons, ha-banim shelo, becomes banav. Wow. Ito, with him. Mitoch, from within, or among. And here it uses the translates among. So from mitoch, from among, or within. Bnei Yisrael, again, we see this highly high-frequency term here. Sons of Israel. Lecha hanoli. Now, what do you think? Did you, to, to take a look at this, the root there. Does cool. it relate to something you it looks like, are familiar It looks with? like Cohen, like priest. Yes. Okay. Yes, exactly right. Beautiful. And so it's translated, well, here's, here it says it, right, to serve me. But um, this lechachano le literally means lechahen, le that's the music, lechahen, it's a number three verb, is to minister or serve as priest. To mm. priest, you can almost say, make it, make it a, make a verb out of it and say, to priest for me. That's all, that makes sense, yeah. Okay, to priest for me. And then it gives their names. So we have Aaron, and then here's his sons, Nadav, Avihu. Nada ve'avihu, Elazar ve'itamar. Now, this should jump off at you and ask, you should ask a question. Why didn't it say Nada ve'avihu, ve'elazar ve'itamar? Why isn't there a vav here? Is there a grammar reason or just a midrash reason? I don't think it's a midrashic reason. Okay. I think I think it's 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 uh, it, it's telling us something because who were the ones that offered the incense and ended that's up, that's what i mean you know, is there is there a midrashic reason meaning is it, is it yeah, not I, well, not, it's not grammar actually, related uh, right i didn't read it. it in the midrash okay but i'm but i just i happened to notice it when i saw it here that's and I cool. went, oh this is telling me something mm-hmm. the torah is telling us something that there's there's a, th- these two are distinct from these two right right okay so let's move on and then it says again b'nai 
Now here we have Bnei Yisrael. Here we have Bnei Aharon. Habanim Shel Aharon reduces down to Bnei Yisrael. Oh, excuse me, Bnei Aharon. Hmm. Excuse me, I was looking at the other thing. Okay, we're doing a little, a little, let's take a little more traction here. Oh, sorry, uh, my bad. Okay, let me get my mouse over here again. Va'asita, uh, yes sir. Va'asita, mm -hmm. big day, kodesh, la'aharon, achika, achicha, that's a hard one to say. Lechabod, ultifaret. Say that last word again. It's either ul, tiv, it's a fet, a fe, not a pe, aret, or is it? Right, so here's a good one, by the way. Here's a, We just talked about the principle of backward buildup. Oh, okay, gotcha. Ret. So this would be a good one. Ret. Aret, paret, tifaret, latifaret, ulatifaret? No. Actually, if you're thinking in terms of syllables. Yeah. Because that's kind of what you want to do. You want to want to be saying it in terms of what's this syllable. So here we got ret, aret, tifaret, ultifaret. See how it breaks down? Uh huh. So I said. So back. So I did say ultifaret. How was that? Did I? Is that still not right? Uh, I'd have to go back and watch the tape. And okay. I'm not going to do that right now. That's okay. <laughs> Let me know if you figure out how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not able to do that right now. So uh, okay. That's okay. You go right ahead. I'm going to follow okay, you and so, learn. Now, here's a case where I want to, again, show a feature that and we've looked at it once before. Safari. A feature okay. of Safari. So if I come up here and I press on the alphabet, okay, the Aleph or the A here in this case, this shows me the options for the layout of the text. I can have Hebrew only. I can have English only. I can have English, Hebrew and English in these different forms, you know, side by side or column or whatever you want to do. But also the other thing that I want to see here is what's called down here the vocalization. Now vocalization means with the vowels. You could call it vowelization if you want. So I could do it like this in the text where you don't see any vowel points at all. And this, by the way, is how the Torah text is read with that special Ashuri script that's in a Torah scroll. There are no vowel markers or anything like that. Okay. And then there's this one that we've been looking at. And then there's this one, which is, these are the cantillation marks, the trup that's called, okay, the music, if you will, of how, how it's read. How it's so the reason I wanted to bring this out is this is not a vowel right here. Mm -hmm. That's an accent mark. This is an accent mark. This is an accent mark. Okay. That's an, a very important accent mark that occurs in the middle of a verse called the uh, atnachta. Uh, and this is accent. And this is next to that right there. That's an accent mark. Sometimes you see some over, but most of the time it's under. Okay. So all those marks are strictly for singing though, right? They're not for pronunciation if you're just talking, right? So if you're dealing with the biblical text, then the accent mark is important. Because, for example, if someone knows about saying Shema, right? Mm -hmm. Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. And then we say Baruch Shem Kvod Machuto Lulam Ba'ed. And then there's a whole series of verses that come after it. It starts with the word Ve'ahavta. Now, a lot of people say Ve'ahavta. And they put the emphasis on the wrong mm. syllable. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. But it's really vahavta. Okay. That makes because sense. If, if you don't say vahavta, you're not putting it into the future like you shall. You're putting it in the past. You loved. You don't love now. So these the the for most of us, these accent marks aren't so relevant at this stage of our development, but they do have value, and that's the case here. The asita. All right, and you notice here it's just giving like a command for make sac sacral vestments, um, but it's really uh, more in this case, uh, you shall make. And uh, let me go ahead and take that off though, because I don't want to confuse everybody. So literally, literally going through here, and there's another little point I want to bring out just very softly, and it'll come up over and over and over. Um, and basically, make you will make. 
So after this verb, you will make, basically. And by the way, I must say that the most oft-repeated verb in this section of the book of Exodus, after Mishpatim, is some variation of the word do or make. I saw. Got it. And it, it can, it's, you look at it and it's like all over the place. It jumps out at you. Um, so here it says, Vasita, Vasita Vigde Kodesh. Well, wait a minute. I thought the word for a garment, we looked at it last week, our last last lesson, was Begid or Begadim. Oh, what the bed bait. instead of a, instead of a vet. Where's the, right. where's, the, where's, the, where's, the, yeah, where's the dot here? Hmm. Well, it just, it just, I'll say it really quickly. It's not so important, but it, it, it happens a lot in the biblical text. That because this ends with an open kind of syllable, vasita, uh, it's not a closed syllable. Okay. Okay. Uh, then it's going to carries over, and it's sort of like an apple or the elephant instead of right. That kind of makes sense. It, it's to create flow. Okay, vasita vigde kodesh. So this is garments holy. And again, this is a noun plus noun here. Although some people could argue that this is an adjective. Uh, Vigde Kodesh, for whom? La'aron, for Aaron. Achicha, your brother. Lechavod, and by the way, where's the where's the dot? Shouldn't it be, isn't the word kavod for honor? Hmm. And uh, again, it's a similar situation that we had over here. So the dot disappears, you'll see that all the time, but it doesn't change the meaning of the word. So it means for honor, to, or in this case, they're translating dignity. Ultifarit, ultifar okay? And by the way, the word here for splendor or adornment, the word is usually so splendor, is tiferet. Why is it tiferet? So I can hear. I come to one of these. Is it the music of the, of the verb? It's the it's it's the music of the trump. Okay. Because I can I can hear Dr. Gableine, you know, of, uh, can I say a blessed memory? My, my professor of Hebrew from Fuller Seminary all those ages ago hmm. when we would sit on his couch and uh, it is his condo in Santa Monica, California, sitting side by side, reading the Hebrew text. And I can hear him right now saying, this is a pausal accent, a very strong pausal accent. And it changes the vowel that's here in this part of the word. So instead of Tiberit, it's Tifara. It. <laughs> All right, let's do, uh, do we have time for one more here? Sure. Yep, sure do. Okay. All right, I'm on screen. Ve'ata t'daber. Yeah, t'daber. I was thinking, ta-da, t'daber, t'daber. That's cute. Il hachma, no, excuse me, hachme lev, asher mile tiv, Ruach. This is one thing I was going to say. Uh, it took me a while. So it, mm -hmm. it looks like it says Rucha, but mm -hmm. mm, you have to explain that too. So Ruach, Hachma, Vaaso. There's that word I saw again. Vaasu. Yeah, Vaasu. Sorry. It, Big Day. Now there's a bet. Big Day. Aharon, Lakodeshu. Is it Lakodeshu? I'm going to go with that. <laughs> I may not be right. You'll correct me, I'm sure. Lakahanoli. Uh, okay. Beautiful. Excellent. And I'm just, I'm so proud of you, really. And I'm not being gratuitous. Okay. Uh, you know, to, to interact with someone in the text, for me personally, is one of the greatest things to do on the planet. That's cool. I have such a debt of gratitude to Hashem for even creating the Hebrew language and creating the world's with uh, with the power of the Hebrew language. And there's such beauty in here. And anybody who makes such an effort to bind him or herself to the text, this is not what's known as a concept called amelut b'torah. The word amal means with an ayin. Amal means toil, labor. And that's what we're called to do. It's not supposed to be easy. It's supposed mm. to, you're supposed to sweat it. Okay, just like Rashim said to Adam, you know, by the sweat of your brow, you're gonna sure. you're gonna gonna make you make your bread. So uh, here we we toil in Torah. It's a right thing to do. Okay. And so when we come here, we see some ref some reference points to previous things. First of all, Vata, we we already run that that case. So we saw that that up here at the beginning here, Vata Hakrev, and then we saw that up here that that um, in the first verse, Vata Tetzave. And down here we're seeing this this pattern again, Vata Tedaber. So just like we had up here. Uh, looking at Tetzave, notice the music. Mm -hmm. e -a -e. Now let's come down here and look at this particular word. 
meaning speak, e a e. Okay? Mm -hmm. This is what I call a number three verb or a pl. Okay, it's known as an intensive. All right, and uh, and but it's not always intense. That's just the na the label that's put on it. And so you will speak. This is future. You will speak to all. And now, by the way, you look at this and you go, "Oh, call." It's really cool. Sometimes mm -hmm. you see a dot over here. That's that long patah on, or hamad, excuse me. Uh, yes. And, in, yeah, you can see that it's longer mm -hmm. than that one. Yeah, so just a tiny little bit. Uh, sometimes you'll see a vav in here, a holm vav, but, but it's rare. Ko chach me lev. Now, chach me lev means wise of heart. Here it's translated are skillful. But the literal meaning it is, of it is, and you will speak to all wise guys, because it's chachme, it's plural, chachme lev, mm. wise of heart. Asher, by this time we should recognize that this word means which, W-H-I-C-H. Mm -hmm. And now we come to the word miletiv, and you asked about this, William, with the aleph here, and what, what's, you know, what's the structure, what's the root of this? The root is actually mem lamed aleph. Um, I've referred to some words before as uh, ending with a hey, and they have certain phenomenon. And this is one that the third letter of the root is a aleph, and it has certain phenomenon. It has to do with being um, so full, I, I guess. It, it causes some, some changes in the vowel structure. You'll see that. Okay. If you take this word and throw it into palim and look at all the different forms, you'll see some, some places where it might be different than something else. Because we have what's, I'll just say this really quickly in passing. Uh, Hebrew has seven different types of action. But are really only two different types of verbs, strong ones and weak ones. Hmm. So the weak ones fall into several subcategories. And this is one of the uh, subcategories that's known as a, you know, a verb that has an olive in the third position. There's a technical term for it. I won't go into that. Not important. But, uh, but in this case, if I just put my mouse, um, I put my little marker here over the vav, it's mileti, which means I filled. So here it says, basically, I have... Uh, you speak to all of the wise-hearted ones. Which ones? Which I have filled, basically him. Miletiv, him. Hmm. So it's speaking here in the plural, but now it's going down to the individual. Miletiv, I've filled that individual with what? Ruach chokma. Ruach is spirit, wind, breath. In this case, it's it's endowed with a gift. He's a, here they translate gift of skill. Really, the, technically, it's spirit of wisdom, chokhmah. And by the way, notice how this is a little bit longer than this one mm -hmm. right here. Just like you noted, this one over here is a little bit longer right. than this one right here or this one right here. Okay, so so spirit of, literally speaking, spirit of wisdom, ve'asu et big day. Now, wait a minute, look at this. And they, this means they and, and they made. Can you pause right there? Them. Go back two words to ruach. To explain the patak under the chet there. Why is it sounded? Why does it look backwards? Ah, okay, Blue. I'm glad you brought that out. This happens frequently in, uh, I say frequently, there are some high frequency words which you will see this, like the word poteach, like in the Psalms, poteach et yidecha masbi ratzon. You open your hand and you satisfy the desire of every living thing, is how most people translate the English there. Poteach, but it looks like potecha. Uh, Mm -hmm, right and so that's that's as known as a, a furtive patach in this case and it's uh, that's the technical term you'll when you see it at the end of a word like this then you put the vowel sound before the chet okay so ruach uh, the word for strength koach okay kaf excuse me uh kuf okay it's kaf kaf vav chet koach um, seems like every time I've seen that letter chet at the end of a word and the patak is there, it's, it seems like it's always ach, not cha. Yes, for the word for brain, moach. Every single time. Okay, gotcha. Okay. So koach, moach, ruach. Um, nice. If I think a little bit more, I'll come up with some other ones. Okay. And then with, so ruach, so it was spirit of wisdom, and they're, they're going, what are they going to do with the spirit of wisdom? Vasu, and they're going to make it direct object. Now, wait a minute. Up here, we had Vigde Kodesh, holy garments. Here we have Vigde Aharon, 
Be so these are garments of Aaron. Uh, so here it says right here, Aaron's garments. Now be, here is big day, right? Not big day. Yes. Why is it here? Is it big day? See this right here? Mm -hmm. The Sita. What's going on? Is that happening down here? Nope. It's a Et. hard stop. Et. It's a hard stop. Okay. Et big day Aaron. Le show. This is like to sanctify him or to to make him holy. Le Kadesh is the verb. It's a number three verb. It's an intensive, like le daber. But because of this vav here on the end, it'd be le kadsho. And that vav is le ha, vav makes it for him, right? That's right. Okay. And le hano, the same thing here, le hano li, that he's going to be a minister or a priest to, to me. me. Nice, very nice. All right. I guess I'm going to come up for air for a second and say mm -hmm. to the viewers. If these types of things you find helpful in this, it's not minutia. It's really still very surface level in our treatment of the text. There's a lot more here that I'm totally ignoring at this point. There, we're just kind of trying to do this at, at a very surface level. If you find this helpful, please let me know. You can you can either send an email to me at the email address that's on the uh, on the screen there, gshebrew at gmail dot com. Uh, or if you want to put a comment there as well, but be nice, you know, in your comments. A lot of people are nasty. You ever notice that? People yeah. say nasty things online. So d don't do that. And by the way, if you're a Christian believer and you're watching this, you don't need to tell me that you believe that JC is God. I already know that, that you believe that. And I believe that you believe that. But you don't have to tell me that because I don't. <laughs> and I won't. So uh, there we go. Okay. My dear friends, hope this message finds you well. If you like the way this channel is going and the channel has been a blessing to you, please consider supporting the channel by going to the website, tanakhtalk.com, T-A-N-A-C-H-T-A-L-K.com. Thank you once again for your time and for supporting Tanakh Talk. Shalom. So I'd like to stop here, even though we only got through four verses. The That's all right. Last verse of the previous, and, and just to say, is there anything that we can take away from all of this? Well, I think there's a couple of things that we can look at. Number one, you notice how much detail is involved here? It's it's a lot of information. Mm -hmm. uh, rather than just saying, and make me some holy garments. It goes into a lot of detail. It has to be, the oil has to be crushed. That's it has to do with something it's for burning the oil. But this has to be woven finely. If you go down and you look through at some of the other aspects of the, uh, I'll just mention this here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six elements here there was uh, someone there, there was a, a priest that was called like the ordinary priest and then there was a high priest the high priest had eight different parts to his garment and as you keep going through this parsha you're going to see all kinds of gorgeous aspects to how it looked can if you go through this and you try to imagine with your mind's eye what do these garments look like and there are people who've I would try to replicate them and give us a sense of what they are. And there's a lot of detail, two shoulder pieces, et cetera. So what can we take away from all of this? What we can take away from all this is simply what these garments were to the priest to inspire a sense of reverence. Our physical bodies are to our neshama, our soul. Our soul is clothed in a physical garment. Just as your physical body is clothed in clothing, like my sweater here, my shirt, okay, uh, and if for, for modesty purposes and so forth, so our soul is clothed with the garment of a body. In fact, it's been described by some of our sages that when someone passes from this life, it's like taking off a garment and putting in another or moving from one room to another room. And so we are called in this physical world to, and we said this in our last lesson, to elevate things. Now, we already saw this word, la'alot ner tamid, where Hashem says to Moshe Rabbeinu, to, when he says to kindle the continuously burning lamp, ner tamid. And by the way, if you go to any synagogue, you'll see over the holy ark where the Torah scrolls reside, you'll see a lamp there. Now, today, it's usually electric. It might look like a flickering candle, okay? But it, uh, in, it, in some places, they still have oil. In fact, there's uh, right down the street from where I live here in uh, Nachlot, there's a Syrian uh, shul, and I, I see them go up on a ladder and light the Ner Tamid because it has, has oil in it. Well, this 
is, you know, we all remember the little song, if, if any of you went from a church background, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Right? You remember that? Yep, I do. Um, we, we won't sing it now. But the, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the, but the, 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 the point of it is that when you light a candle, that little wick, that, that flame is very vulnerable and has to be fed. And so the light that's within us, because the commandment of Hashem is, is, is light, that has to be fed. And it has to be in a place that's pure, just like the oil was to be Shemen Zait Zach. Zach means purified. Right? refined so it is with now how do we what's what do we refine you know am i good to go to the gym and i refine my how my good look no refinement has to do with character qualities okay? personality is one thing but character qualities are the things that we develop that is really the garment of the soul is the character qualities that that that, that we develop through this life that's where our beauty where it said their dignity and splendor, or what, what was the phrase here? Was it's translated different different ways? And we said up here that beautiful word, uh, right here, for honor, and for we could say beauty. Now I want to pause on this word for a moment and get a little kabbalistic for a second. Okay. There is something called the spherot, ten of them, and there's something called there's a quality called chesed. And Avram Avinu, Avram, our father, personifies chesed. Well, what is chesed? What's the motivation of chesed? Chesed is like giving. And then opposite that is something called um, gevura. Gevura is, means power, might. It also is used for restraint, holding back. So on the one hand, we have something that's all giving. On the other hand, we have something that's all restraining. And then the, we, have, we have a synthesis of these two called Tiferet. Tiferet is translated beauty. And I heard an excellent, excellent application of this from a former reform rabbi who became a Chabadnik, interestingly enough. I met him in Dayton, Ohio, many years ago. And he gave this beautiful explanation. I'll share it with you as well. It so illustrates. Imagine a piano with 88 keys. Chesed hits all the keys at the same time. Gevura, restraint, so chesed is all giving. Restraint doesn't touch a note. But tiferet, the beauty of tiferet, sits down and it presses some notes while not pressing other notes. Mm, nice. The restraint. So you see the giving and the restraining that then creates this beautiful melody. And that's the rhythm, the music of our life. We learn what the character qualities are that Hashem wants us to develop. And there are times when we are very intensely focused on giving, like right now, what the many things that people are doing for the land of Israel in this terrible time of war that we're making this recording. Um, and, you know, and, and I think if you look at the third chapter of the book of Ecclesiastes, you'll see this reflected in there where he says there's a time for this and there's a time for that. Okay, there's a time for doing this and there's a time for, to refrain from doing this. These, these are, you see these qualities coming out. So the garments of the priest in all their beauty, their detail, and their refinement, speak to us about the beauty and the refinement of our own souls. And that's a gift that we give to our Creator. When we work to say, not no to evil things, but no to things that are could be, you know, they're permitted. You know, I can sit around and watch YouTube shorts all day long if I want to, right? I can mm. do that, <laughs> right? But it, is that going to refine me? Mm. Or, is it, or is it going to somehow you know, mess up the oil of my lamp and it won't be burning as brightly as it could if I exercised, in this case, some restraint. So there are times when I need, for example, I was just at the, the shuk here in, uh, in Jerusalem a while ago to go buy some things and I look for some people to, to give some charity to, right? And that's giving, that's chesed, okay? Do I want to do that? No, not necessarily. But if I do it, is there a benefit to do it yes there's a benefit to giving even if you don't feel like it and then there's times to restore, refrain from certain things you know whether you're walking down the street especially true for guys watch what do you do with your eyes you know you, that's why i wear a baseball cap with a nice brim on it okay so sometimes especially in the summertime here people aren't always as modest and i want to protect my eyes because mm -hmm. my eyes are the window to the soul as it said mm -hmm, right. and i want those windows to be clean all right that's so awesome. i don't mind talking about that here because it's really really critical that we manage our body this physical garment for the soul. To me a favor. But inside of all of that is something 
much higher that we have to refine. So to close all this out, and I heard this said by somebody the other day, um, someone speaking, I think, in the education committee here in, uh, in Israel. It was a, it was a Hebrew uh, lecture given. given. Uh, really, it's like a, a rebuke, really, to the educational system for teaching people how to be Israeli but not how to be Jewish. Uh, very interesting mm. thing. And, and, and she said one of the biggest things that she'd learned from her study of Judaism was that I'm not a body with a soul. I'm a soul with a body. And that's very important to know. That is interesting. Because what, what you see, you're going to say, well, that's you. No, it's not. Okay. Uh, I'm the only me I know. And I live behind these eyes that are looking out to you. And you're looking at me with your eyes from behind your eyes. Okay. There's, what, what's that seer that's behind the, the optics that are at work here? Okay. That, that's, that's the you. That's invisible. What's amazing is it's invisible, but it animates the body. It's invisible, but it says things. It thinks things. It creates things. All right. But it's that's the that's the real you the body is just the mechanism the 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 assembly whatever it is the the assembly line mm -hmm. for creating whatever you want to call it all right and we have to take care of making sure that the body doesn't run the show but that the neshama the soul the nefesh runs the show and when we learn torah for example and we study the principles of the great masters of what's called musa Musar, how some people pronounce it, which is like like really refined conduct, uh, especially the book of uh, Pirkei Avot, the Ethics of the Fathers. You, that's what, it's all about that, and you study that and you find out things that you can grab a hold on. And Rav Yisrael Salant, that was also a great Musar master from a couple hundred years ago, from the city of Salant, said that if in your life you succeed in changing one character quality, then that's a huge, huge thing because changing one character quality can change the world. So if a person has an issue with anger, and by the way, if you want to know what's the character quality I have to work on, it's the one that's troubling you the most right now. So do a little inventory in your life. Think, what do I have the greatest difficulty with? Hmm. Um, it might be anger. It might be sloth. It might be, you know, you, you because something's eating at you, you're eating at something, <laughs> right? popcorn late at night or whatever it is you know it, it's so many things that we can talk about here that relate to the refinement of our inner garment you know taking care of the body for sure and making sure that it doesn't uh, kind of go its own way and do its own thing the animal doesn't run your soul my name is gabriel Arie, all right ben avram gabriel is the angelic part the spiritual part of me and Arie, which means lion is the beast so every one of you is a gabriel Arie or a gabriela ariela if you will in the fact that, in the sense that, in the truth that, you have a spiritual component to you and you have a biological, animalistic component to you. This is like, you know, Tanya Chabad taught Hasidic about 101. But it's true. It's true for everybody because it says that of Adam HaRishon, Hashem Vayipach Ba'apav, he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and he became, according to Ankelis, the Aramaic commentator, a talking spirit. That's what literally says it. He became a talking spirit. And in that sense, we are different than the animals because they came from the dust of the ground like we did, but they didn't have the breath of God breathed into them. And that's what we have. And it animates us and gives us the ability to think in, in tenses, past, present, future, gives us the ability to extrapolate, to pontificate mm. like I'm doing right now, and nice. to, to be at a higher level. And we want that higher level to be a productive. So when it says there that he, it, what did it say back up here? It's such a beautiful language. I'm absolutely fascinated by what the Hebrew text says here. Uh, and I know you don't see it right now, but I'm just going back up to what we said in the beginning. That's uh, the wrong chapter there. Let's get over here. Well, there it is. And I'm just going to show it to you one more time because okay, I think it's sure. worth show, showing. Sounds good. Okay, so we're ending off where we started which was this verse, and in this, in this case, the last three words. And the main focus is on this one right here, Leha'alot, which is translated down here for kindling lamps regularly or literally to go up lamp or candle always. So when you kindle these lamps, it's supposed to have, it has the idea of elevation to it. Now, it's true. They had to go up to light the lamp, right? It wasn't down on the right, floor. Right. It was up. Okay, that's important to know. But there's also the idea of elevation. Somebody asked me many years ago when I was in my conversion process, could you define Judaism in one word? I said, yeah, I can. They said, what is it? I said, elevator. Oh, nice. Elevator. Right. That's Very Judaism cool. in one word. Okay? Very because cool. We, 
we take things that are common. For example, when we say a blessing over a piece of fruit or whatever, uh, we elevate, we cause an elevation for the sparks of life that are in the godly sparks that are in that thing, because there's godly sparks in everything. And we cause that to go up. And I cause myself to go up when I restrain from doing something that would otherwise feed the flesh, as we used to say in the old days in the Christian world, right? So the, the, there's such wonder and there's such majesty. And there's, I could just go on and on about this, the beauty of the Hebrew language and how it speaks to what we are as beings and what we can be in terms of enhancement. So I adjure you, if you will, this week to look for things you can do to elevate yourself. And again, going back to the point we just made, if you're not sure, observe yourself for a week. Mm -hmm. Write down some things about yourself. Keep a little, keep a little journal. I have one over here, and write down some. Like, boy, I was angry like five times today. Let me get you full. Let me, an get anger you, you. let me get you full screen again. Oh yeah, sorry. No, you good. So yeah, so anger. Yeah, I know what you're saying. That thing. We is, all struggle with yeah. that. You know, and look at look at how people are. With the, uh, we just talked about it earlier. The comments that people make under different videos, even these videos, you know, they mm -hmm. they can be very barbed and acerbic and acrid and all kinds of other adjectives I can come up with. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. That's an opportunity to exercise restraint. That's that concept of uh, givura that we talked about. Okay, right. and there's a time to give, and there's a time to hold back from giving, and so that's an opportunity. So it's amazing. If you recognize in the moment, at a higher level, at a more elevated level, what's really going on in your life. So I share these thoughts with you, hoping that they will nurture you in some way and that you'll become a greater person than you are yesterday because of the things that we talked about today. I'll say for the benefit of, uh, of anybody that's in the Nashville area, now those of you watching this, you know, 10 years from now, this doesn't apply, but we're uh, making this recording on the... 15th of February 2024 seven, 2024 mm -hmm. yeah, it's important to say that uh, this is the Hebrew date of Zion Adar which is the seventh of the month of Adar and this is this year we have two Adars because Hebrew has something called a Shana Me'uberet it's a funny phrase Shana Me'uberet means a pregnant year mm. <laughs> so a pregnant year we have two Adars Adar Aleph and Adar Beit and that is to keep a correction in the calendar because the calendar is lunar, as many people know. And so just uh, if we didn't make the correction, then it would be sort of like the Arabs with Ramadan, the Muslims with Ramadan, where it kind of keeps moving. So uh, 11 days a year going back. So someone who was born actually like in the winter, uh, that the month they were born in might show up, you know, a number of years later in the summertime. Hmm. So that we we have, because Pesach in particular has to be Bechodesh Ha'aviv, in the month of spring, all right, then that's why we have this phenomenon. So that's I'm giving. But so what's significant about this particular for me night where we're recording and then in the Jerusalem is that this is the seventh of Adar. Seventh of Adar is the uh, yard site, the uh, death date of Moshe Rabbeinu, our teacher Moshe. Allah shalom. Gabriel, my friend, thank you very much. Great. Great show as always. Good lessons and loving the Hebrew. Really, really am. This is good. This has helped me out so much. So you all should have a great week. And uh, we'll see you same time, same place next week, Hashem willing. And it's Hashem. take care, everybody. Peace. Shalom. Bye-bye. Shalom, my dear friends. Hope this message finds you well. If you like the way this channel is going and the channel has been a blessing to you, please consider supporting the channel by going to the website, tanakhtalk.com. T-A-N-A-C-H-T-A-L-K. Com. Thank you once again for your time and for supporting Tanak Talk. Shalom. Shafa. <laughs>